advantage for the younger American fighter. A one-inch height advantage for Barrera. Barrera's unusual arm length for his body. Two and a half inch advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist was significant in the first fight where he landed his jab twice as often as did Juarez. They both weighed in within a pound of the 130 pound weight limit. Barrera up to 138, Juarez 136, meaning they are both exceptionally well conditioned athletes who didn't need a lot of rehydration overnight. First fight, CompuBox numbers, Larry. These numbers show the difference in what happened in the first six rounds and the second six rounds. Barrera clearly having the edge in the first six rounds and Juarez pulling even with him 14 punches around in the second half but Juarez landing more power shots Barrera landed about 80 more jabs in the fight Juarez about 30 more power shots so it was a very close fight and the long time popular champion got the benefit of the doubt and the victory Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Marco Antonio Barrera Rocky Juarez fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the Unified Rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we order the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Emmanuel Stewart. We know how much respect you have for the long, deep amateur career. Rocky Juarez, silver medalist at the Olympic Games in Sydney in 2000, had a 68-fight win streak at one point as an amateur. This was a real American amateur star. Yes, and I think that's going to be a big factor. You know, when he fought Barrera the first fight, I said Barrera was going to have maybe one of the roughest fights because he's going against a different era different type fighter that he's been fighting and that's what it turned out to be i think rocky with his short power punches is going to be a big big danger for him throughout this entire fight tonight the olympic gold medal medal that he didn't win in sydney at one point he approached that medal picked it up and kissed it he says that he touched barrera's title belt in la thinking that that belt should be his larry maybe his wish comes true tonight he says he'll make it come true by exposing barrera as an old fighter, by taking more risks, we'll see. So Rocky Juarez, named Rocky by his father because he wanted him to be a fighter, tries to fulfill his destiny against the man who has been the flagship fighter from Mexico for most of the past decade. And here he comes. Ricky Hatton in a sombrero. How's that for a sight? Herrera and Hatton have become big buddies, and Hatton makes the trip here to root his pal on. And I'll tell you, an Englishman looks good in a sombrero. I said that uh, he went over when Herrera once was called the baby faced assassin. That face is not the face of a baby anymore. He comes across more as a, a wise old padre, but beneath. That mask is one tough dude. And even his promotional partner, Oscar De La Hoya, Emmanuel, said of him after the first Juarez fight, I don't think he was ready. I don't think he was conditioned. His body didn't look good. Yesterday, at the weigh-in, he looked sensational. He's ready. He's focused. And, you know, when you really consider that 10 years ago, he kicked off the boxing after dark series with that brilliant fight with him and Kennedy McKennedy. And here he is 10 years later heading into another fight, which we expect to be another bond burner. Because he's been an extremely exciting fighter for us in professional boxing for the last 10 years. How significant has been the wear and tear? Maybe only his countryman and longtime three-fight rival Eric Morales has had more big fights, more big rounds, more dramatic moments in the past decade than this guy. How much longer can he do it? Herrera tells us he will retire at the end of next year. Larry Merchant often says, if you're talking about retirement, you're functionally retired. But maybe this isn't the guy, Larry. Well, even he admits that seeing his partners perform, give those vintage performances, has inspired him. Michael Buffer is ready to provide the official introductions.
Ladies and gentlemen from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and main events are proud to present the featured bout of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Brought to you in association with HBO Pay-Per-View. Sponsored by Cazadores, Rockstar Energy Drink, Southwest Airlines, and Sony. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Dr. Tony Alamo Jr., Executive Director Keith Kaiser, and the World Boxing Council President Jose Suleiman. At ringside, the three judges who will be scoring this bout on the 10-point system, Chuck Jampa. Hubert Min and Dave Moretti, and inside the ring, the man in charge of the action when the bell rings, referee Joe Cortez. And now from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get her. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with silver, official weight 129 pounds. Since capturing an Olympic silver medal in 2000, he now has a professional record consisting of 25 victories, including 18 knockouts with only two defeats. From Houston, Texas, the challenger, the fighting pride of North Houston, Ricardo Rocky Warren. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing green, official weight, 130 pounds. Professional record, 62 victories with 42 knockouts, four defeats, and one no decision. Damas y Caballeros de Ciudad de Mexico, the three-time world champion, the reigning, defending WBC Super featherweight champion of the world, the baby face assassin, Marco Antonio. All right, gentlemen, this fight for the WBC Super Featherweight Championship of the World. I'm here to enforce the rules, but safety is first and foremost on my behalf. The punches here will still be good. Give me a good, clean fight. No quiero golpe de tras la nuca. Ya leí la regla en Camerino. Give me a good fight. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch him up. Did Rocky Juarez blow a chance to beat Barrera in the first fight because he wasn't aggressive enough. Is Barrera over the hill? I think the first was the real answer. I think he, he didn't be aggressive enough the first fight. He had too much respect and let Barrera get a hit on points, particularly with the jab. And Barrera starts off with the jab again, just as was the case in round one of the first fight. Juarez firing his own jab back. Barrera tries the left hook to the body. It's been his money punch for a long, long time. They are fighting in Everlast gloves, partially as the result of a contractual arrangement that Barrera has made with Everlast. Juarez loves Reyes gloves, would like to be wearing them tonight, may not be able to do quite as much punching damage in Everlast as was the case with Reyes. I'm looking at the gloves of Barrera, something we call in the game called skinning the gloves. We're looking at Barrera's gloves. He's got tape all the way up near to the, the knuckle part of the gloves, which makes his gloves be much more harder, and they, they have much more damage as compared to Rocky, which has his gloves a standard weight. Legal? 
Well, this is a little trick of the trade, and uh, they've got away with it. Oftentimes, the commission will stop and tell you, hey, you're just skinning the gloves. You, is you it up to the, the commission, table. or is it up to Cortez? I mean, it's, it's, Cortez. No, it's usually the commission inspectors, but it, it makes the gloves much more harder and compact. Are you, are you calling it a skinning of the gloves? That's what, that's every phrase we use in the game, which means that, you know, you take a lot of tape and, you know, you pull the weight of the glove back up to the knuckle area, which makes the gloves be much more harder. So if there's a glove advantage here, it doesn't belong to Juarez, yeah. it belongs to Barrera. Yeah, the punching power right now with the gloves is going to definitely go to Barrera. It's a boxing match in round one. It was a slugfest down the stretch in Los Angeles, but it was a boxing match for the first four or five rounds. The boxing match is seen to favor Barrera. Right hand over the top land. Barrera has a good job. It doesn't look that effective, but he works it very often, and he gets a hit on points. And so the first fight, I think, that was a deciding factor in the decision. It was his jab early in the fight? Rocky Juarez is a self-admitted slow starter. His own manager, trainer, or trainer, I should say, Ray Antavera, says we work and work and work to try to get him to start faster. Somehow it doesn't happen. Larry Merchant asked him yesterday, "Are you a cautious driver?" And the answer was, "Yes. That's how my father taught me to drive." So there is a cautious nature here, and he's fighting against that nature by trying to be more aggressive. He himself said, he, I have to start earlier. I have to try to stretch Barrera out more in the early rounds. But round one here has so far been more controlled by Barrera than by Juarez. Yeah, Barrera's fighting a very fast pace for a veteran fighter, and he's working his jab beautiful. Landing his jab. As I mentioned, during the tail of the tape, Herrera has unusually long arms for his body composition. He shocks opponents with the length of his jab. Juarez missing down the stretch. Herrera outboxed him in round one. He started off well. Okay, watch his head now. Don't, don't get crazy. Yes, nice and, nice and calm. Give me more water. More water, please. It's the first round. Everything calm. Round one clearly won by Marco Antonio Barrera, at least in these eyes. 25 out of 63 by CompuBox count. Juarez 11 out of 48. Barrera 15 out of 41 jabs. His jab won the first fight for him. It seems to have won the first round here. Well, they was getting on Juarez and saying he was giving him too much respect. I don't think that's the case. I think that, that Barrera just fighting at such a fast pace with a good jab that but Juarez just can't get his rhythm together this time. <clears throat> Barrera has been very accurate so far. Landed a short jab to start things off here in the second. Hopping Juarez at range with the jab. Seeming to land it just as Rocky wants to start his attack. Rocky is a little slow getting started, but once he gets warmed up, he's still very dangerous. His tremendous little short punches. And once he starts getting close to Barrera, Barrera's going to have some problems. There are some body shots from Juarez with authority. Get him out. Get him out. <coughs> Barrera with an uppercut. This is a mostly Barrera crowd. That was abundantly clear during the walk. Yeah, that was the best punch of the fight, too, that uppercut. Almost as if he was prepared for Juarez to be on top of him more, because I, I don't recall him throwing that punch <coughs> no. very often. Barrera is Just, way more commanding tonight in the early going. He has that same facial expression that he had on his face when he fought Nassim Hamid. He's extremely determined tonight, and very mostly, I think, frustrated with himself because of his last fight. His destruction of Prince Nassim was a classic. Well, a I display of boxing not matched by many others in the last several years. <laughs> He's fighting with that same determination tonight. And, same intensity. Juarez missing his jab. Barrera has been spot on with his. Rocky just can't get the jab there so far. 
perfect one-two by Barrera, except right, straight right hand followed by the left hook. Not the classic one-two. But this is one of the biggest punches that Steel Barrera has ever been in a ring with in Juarez. Juarez maybe, the biggest. Big, big, right. big, maybe the biggest. Maybe the biggest. I think he punches out. better than Morales. Well, he was in the with Pacquiao, maybe. Okay. All right, I forgot about <laughs> I forgot about Pacquiao. Yeah. I think he might have heavier hands than Pacquiao. He just doesn't have the yeah, well, he's more dangerous. De Pacquiao, you can see it. He shoots a long one, too. But yeah, the Rocky gets real close to you, real lazy. And he's very short punches, so he's a little difficult. Got a quick left hook. That's his best punch. Early in his career, he set up opponent after opponent for left hook knockouts. Then he said, as I got to fighting better fighters, I learned I couldn't do that. He, he can punch with both hands, so he, big puncher. Barrera moving, jabbing, keeping oh, Juarez get up, get up, off balance, up, up, up. making Juarez miss with his jab so far. It's been a very pure technical first two rounds for Marco Antonio Barrera. It says Rocky on the birth certificate of Rocky Juarez, but he still doesn't fight like a Rocky. Very cautious fighter. Okay. I want the right hook. I want the right hand break. But you, hey, close the gap a little closer. It's too far up. When you close the gap, I want the left hand up. I don't want you dropping the left hand. You understand? The jab is getting to you. The jab is coming in. You can't afford that jab. Take the you know, you know, you right Go punch behind the head. You understand? Yeah. You hear me? Both guys. You understand? Okay? I'm going to tell you, guys. Let, 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 let him get caution. You understand? Okay, but I want combination. Pop up, one, two, two, pop up. You're making a miss. Yeah. 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 Two, 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 two or three, and the last one right to the mouth. Yeah. And then change and go to the bottom. Round three begins. It's been a boxing match for the first two rounds. Not the slugfest Rocky Juarez might have hoped for. Harold Letterman sees it the way I do. Marco Antonio Barrera outboxing Rocky Juarez in both of the first two rounds. It's instructive in a way that Barrera has not had the kind of trouble he had in the first fight with his mouthpiece. Remember that he had a new mouthpiece, unusual for a professional of his standing uh, to have one that didn't fit properly, but he did. Sort of symptomatic of perhaps some of the complacency he had going into that fight. Well, he's got to be very careful. Because Rocky is starting to pick up the pace a little bit. He's getting a little bit closer to him. And I can just see how he's starting to load up on those power shots now. Good right hand to the body by Juarez. And another good right hand to the body. Herrera lands two left hooks upstairs. You get Herrera on the ropes. And more often than not, he'll choose to fight his way off the ropes. One of the characteristics that made Barrera a great fighter is that he will always retaliate. Even when you hit him with a good shot, he always wants to come back with punches. That's why it's very difficult to beat him on a decision. That's why his trilogy with Eric Morales is about as watchable as anything in boxing. Because yeah, they both have the same attitude. The same instincts. Both of them. Every time one of them would hit the other, the other guy had to hit him back immediately. Right. Rocky Juarez has landed a few jabs in this round, so he, he is indeed getting closer, but he has to get close to land his jab, and he's stepping up the pace, as Emmanuel said. He's getting into the fight now. Good left hook by Juarez, and he follows up with a couple of body shots. He saw that uh, Barrera was, just couldn't be hit on the head, and so he has smartly gone to the body. Juarez a little more physical in wrestling Barrera around than was the case in the first yes, fight. Yes, is. Both guys are much more intense, as I said, before the fight going into this fight. They both have something to prove. I think Barrera has a little more respect for him, but more determination. When Rocky has a lot of determination, it may be a little less respect for Barrera in this fight. Juarez was quite open in saying, hey, look, of course I admire him. He's great. He's a, a tremendous fighter. He's the best fighter I've ever fought by far. But I learned in the first fight that I can stay with him, and I need to tell myself that I can beat him. Body shot again by Juarez. This by far his best round. 
although by no means has he necessarily won it. I agree with you, but, but he's getting into the fight now. And he is a tremendous puncher. They trade left hooks to punctuate the third round. Cut him off. But you've got to walk him, walk him in to make him shoot. You understand? There is Marco Antonio Barrera's wife, Sandra. And with her tonight are Marco Jr. and Zimena, Barrera's daughter. You see Winky Wright sitting there very close to him, along with Floyd Mayweather Jr. That's quite a uh, high-quality section at the fight. <laughs> Barrera told us yesterday at uh, our meeting with him that he wants to retire to spend more time with his family. Lots of fighters say that. This one you probably believe more than some others. Average per round through three by CompuBox. Juarez only throwing 48 punches around. Barrera landing 20 of 52 around. Harold, how'd you score the first three? Okay, Jim. 29, 28, two rounds to one. Marco Antonio Barrera. Jim, I thought he won the first two rounds, but in the third round, just like Emmanuel Stewart said, Rocky Juarez got back in the fight. He used his physical strength to get him up on the ropes, do some damage with strong shots. Two to one, Barrera. All right, get, 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 get him out. Let's go. Get him out. Get him out. Oh, no, oh, oh. Interestingly, hey, after three hey, rounds hey, in the first hey, fight, hey. Barrera led 29 28 on all three cards. So we have a little bit of a replay tonight, at least on Harold's scorecard. Unwilling to get into the kind of exchanges he did in the first fight so far. Looks like he's trying to conserve yeah. energy for the late rounds, too. Well, he's right now he's having problems, believe it or not, hitting uh, Rawlings with a lot of shots, too, that he was catching earlier. Just hit him with a right uppercut yeah. and a left hook, however. He did land those two good clean shots right there, but earlier he's been having problems landing punches, though. Juarez walking away as Barrera misses with a wide swing and right. Marco goes to the body. Juarez has had some good body shots earlier in the round. All right, get him Get him up. This is a defensive round for Barrera. He seems to be taking a little bit of a rest, flurrying occasionally just like that. But this is where he had problems in the end of the fight before. When and Gloria started getting into the ropes, and he was having problems getting away for those little short, straight punches of Juarez once he got tired. There so, were also many in the crowd in Los Angeles who assumed that Juarez had won the fight or was winning the fight because he was going forward most of the time. Barrera, of course, is a skilled counterpuncher who likes to go backwards sometimes, yeah. but the layman doesn't often appreciate that. Yes, in the first earlier rounds, which may not have been that dramatic, I thought that Barrera got ahead on points with his jab. Good exchange for Juarez, who landed a left and a right. And once again, the round wanted to have the last say so. Keep him, keep him going back and move him around. Yeah, go, go around him. Don't, don't, don't give him too much chance. Don't, don't let him. Yeah. He's giving you a chance to throw a combination, but don't get, let him get off. You gotta work now. You gotta work up and down. At the distance. Walk and shoot. You understand? Walk him and shoot him. Walk him and shoot him. Do not fall him. He both both ways down the pipe. That's his cue. When he does that, that's your cue to jump in. 
When he grabs you, remember, put your chip and up here. Good job, Joe. Round five begins. Fairly even battle over the first four rounds. In fact, Harold Letterman has it dead even through four. It's clear that the plan for Barrera is to try to fight at this distance, not go into exchanges. But that plan can change in a moment's punch. Yeah, Juarez is getting closer and closer as the fight goes on. He's closing the gap. slow-paced jabbing contest is probably not what Juarez wants. So while Barrero may not be winning this round, these rounds, he is conserving energy in a way that could benefit him yes. later on. Yes, because he, he fell apart a lot at the last fight, the last fight. So far, this is one of those rematches in which both fighters seem to know almost too much about each other so that's why we haven't had any spontaneous combustion yet and it's also a relatively slow pace Barrera only threw 42 punches in round four that's a very low output for him Juarez only threw 56 he wasn't exactly taking advantage of Barrera's inactivity the punches are much more sharp and accurate than compared to the first fight and also the reflexes of both fighters Everything was a little bit more precision in this fight compared to the first one. Good right hand by Barrera. And a left hook to the body that bothered Juarez. Good body shot. Juarez's oh, right eye seems to be closing up. That would be the Barrera jab. Yep. And that can be a big factor going Good uppercut. Juarez landed flush with the left uppercut. Barrera says, come on, try it again. Give me a chance to land my uppercut. Well, Juarez said he was going to take more risks. But in the heat of battle, he reverted to the fighter he is, and he's going to have to win with the fighter he is. Okay, watch that. Come in with that head. Let's go. Closing of Juarez's right eye could be a big advantage, though, for Pereira. Oh, and go. he sees it, and he's going to jab it. Jab it and hook it, and reaching up his left hand. He's got a target now. And he's going to work it. So he will never, good left hook. Yeah, he won't let Juarez get a good rhythm. He always wants to come back with the last punch. Dances away from Juarez's jab. And now Rocky Juarez has a right eye problem as we are between the fifth and the sixth. Come on, with a lot of confidence. Confidence, that's all you need. Yeah, your, your defense. He hasn't really hit you hard. Right here, you see a very good body shot right under by Barrera. It's right, un, right under the heart. Yeah, that one hurt. And left uppercut by Warren, right up between the gloves. Moments after that, Barrera tried to fire his own left uppercut and answer that. But the big damage in the round was the increasing swelling around the right eye of Juarez due to Barrera's left jab. You see, Barrera's jab has still been a pretty consistent factor. He's still working the jab. And whenever he gets hit, he tries to come back with combinations right away to keep Warriors from getting a good rhythm going. Slowing the pace, in the last two rounds, Barrera threw just a total of 70 punches. He threw 63 in the first round when he came out and clearly wanted to win that round and make an impression. But he, you get the feeling that Barrera is cutting it kind of fine like Bernard Hopkins used to do. You know, yeah. trying to win rounds by very small margins and save a lot. But he's using the experience for a lot. He's 
He's still controlling the fight for the most part. Good body shots by Barrera. Got far as against the ropes and landed his left hook to deliver twice. It's up to the younger fighter to impose his will on the older fighter trying to fight and use, use it with, with experience. But he doesn't look energetic enough to do it right now. Standing yeah. and looking at Barrera over and over. As he said, his nature is to be conservative, laid back, safety, and it is really having a struggle, Larry, as you said, doing the fighters being with his own personal demons, which is trying to get himself motivated to fight and quit thinking so much and quit being too safe. And now Barrera is getting three shots yes. with the jab because of that closing right eye. And he's taking advantage. Barrera's fighting a very, very smart fight. Movement, the jab. Mixing it up, yeah. Conserving energy, carefully choosing yeah. his punch output, yeah. going, not taking any risks. Right, going to the left, he'll change direction, going to the right, mix it up to keep him from getting a good weather. See that? Nice changing up again. Brilliant. Made Juarez miss, ripped him with a left hook up the middle. Good body shot by Juarez. And so far, more or less a peak job round for Marco Antonio Guerrero. Get him up, let's go, get him up. We got it, we got it there. Come on, get this on top. Get him up, get him up. For a man who's been fighting professionally since he was 15 years old, he's amazing in all of those big fights that he's had to be able to box on this level, boxing with young kids coming right from the Olympics. Good right hand inside by Juarez. Bothered Barrera. Rocky fires his power punches. He lands with great frequency. Barrera getting him glancing right hand upstairs as Juarez was firing the left of the body. Another slow round in which the pace and the action favored Marco Antonio yeah, Barrera. But he's having a last save. Knows how to flurry. Yep. Another one in the bank. Rocky Juarez's girlfriend, Xenia Fernandez, and their son, Rocky Juarez Jr. She's smiling there, but looked concerned about 30 minutes ago, or 30 seconds ago, I should say, as Rocky came back to the corner to get that right, right. eye treated with the end swell. Hands set, one combination. One, two, three, four. Solid, 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 solid. Do not run up to the guy. Run up to the guy. Walk and shoot. Walk and shoot. You can do it. Well, the first half of this fight has gone sort of like the first half of the first fight, but Barrera may have more energy than he did then because of his conditioning and because of the way he, he's controlled this. In the first six rounds of the first fight, as Larry Merchant told you before the fight, Rocky Juarez averaged 49 punches per round. He said he had to do more tonight. In the first six rounds tonight, he's averaged 48 punches per round. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, 48, uh, 58, 56, four rounds to two, Marco Antonio Barrera. Jim, I don't know, Marco's carving him up with that left jab. He's moving like a Magnus Stewart said, changing direction, nice ring generalship, not getting nailed by Rocky's hard right hands, and Rocky just doesn't do enough when he gets inside. I think Barrera's winning it with the jab. Four to two, Barrera. One judge had it 58-56 at this point in the first fight. Two others had it 59-55. But Barrera was under more duress by this point in the fight the first time around. Rocky hasn't gotten in as many shots tonight. And he was bloody. He was spitting out yeah. his mouthpiece, um, having all sorts of difficulty that almost foretold that it was going to be a rough second half. How much of that, Emmanuel, was Reyes gloves instead of Everlast gloves? I don't think it was. I think that Barrera just came in, totally not prepared or focused. Particularly when we remember that Rocky Juarez's last fight that I remember, he was beaten so decisively and embarrassingly by Humberto Soto. So based on all of that, I don't think Barrera took him as serious as he's taking him now. 
after the Soto lost August 20 last year in Chicago. Barrero took a fight against Reynaldo Hurtado and Corpus Christi and knocked him out in three and knocked out another unknown fighter back in Medrano and Kimber, Louisiana in four. Those were comeback fights designed to rebuild his confidence. Then he fought well against Barrero. Yeah, but no one saw those fights. And so the last time that we saw him on the television said he was looking at Losing to Soto, Losing yeah. to Soto. Before the Barrero fight. Right. Good left hook upstairs by Barrera. Juarez got his in as well. So, as much as he may talk about wanting to force the pace, and as much as he may try to convince himself that he can fight at a faster pace, Rocky Juarez fought the first six rounds here tonight at face basically the same identical pace that he fought in Los Angeles. It's just the fighter that he is. Yep, and when he tries to step it up this time, I think Barrera's going to be right there waiting. Right, he just won't go over the speed limit. His self-imposed speed limit. And Barrera seems to be in much better position tonight to weather whatever storm may come down the stretch. Better conditioned, more focused, fighting more effectively, or at least so it seems. would like to see more action, but frankly, about 80% of them are Barrera rooters. They shouldn't be all that unhappy with what they're watching. You're doing fine. You're moving well. We need more punching, though. We need more punching. Come on, you're full. You're full of life. Let's go. Hey, I'm winning by points. I'm, I'm, I'm scoring points. I'm winning that way. That's what you worked on. Let's go ahead and do it. Do you understand? Let's go out there and do it, Ron. You cannot work out, wait outside and try to go with the jab. He's moving around too much. You've got to overpower him and go to him. Combination of four. Give me combination. This round eight. Okay? You've got to get him. CompuBox numbers in seven. Juarez getting off only 42 punches. Barrera's moving more. He's having trouble finding him. Barrera measuring his own punch output, 13 out of 41. Fighting more defensively than offensively, trying, as you can see, to win rounds and control the fight. Barrera's fighting, Barrera's fight. He don't want to get too many heated exchanges. That's not to his advantage. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. He keeps the fight out here where he can move, change direction, work jabs, throw a few flares, move out of the way. Very smart fight for a veteran fighter, fighting a young, strong guy who's a big puncher. Barrera's holy grail is a rematch with Manny Pacquiao. Well, this ain't over yet. Uh, get on, get on, get on. Juarez is giving some facial and body language indications that he's going to, he, he knows he has to do more attacking. I wonder if he isn't a little discouraged, though, by the closing right eye and the tactical flow of the fight. Good body shot by Barrera. Hammering with that left of the body. No lo aguante, no lo aguante, no jode, no jode. Let's go, let's go. Good body shot by Juarez. Let's go, get him out. Mostly Rocky lands one punch at a time. He really hasn't landed a big combination. No, he's never been able to get a flow. In. And Barrera, who originally came to the boxing scene here as the baby assassin for his great punching pound and slugging and become a, a, a very good technical boxer when he has to and he's doing that tonight. Herrera's corner was asking him for more punches and finally Juarez leans forward, lunges and lands a left hook. Where has that been? But once again, Herrera gets right back to that pesky jab. In between all of the mix up and punches, he still goes back to the jab. Somewhere in the middle as a classic Mexican brawler, Marco Antonio Barrera said to himself, wow, maybe this would be easier if I box. And he didn't yeah. just become a competent boxer. He yes, became sir. a brilliant one. Very beautiful boxer. And I'm watching that as really crowd may not be like it, but he's fighting a masterpiece. He's boxing, changing directions, going in and out, pulling back, making keeping Warriors uncoordinated, off balance, doing a variety of things. Get him out, get him out. 
get him out, get him out, let's go. Let's go, get him out. Well, I guess we can forget the fight of the year stuff. <laughs> because it's been a tactical battle. Not the war that a lot of people anticipated. And I gotta blame that so far, unfortunately, on young Rocky Juarez. He has not committed to the kind of action that would win him the fight. He can't get into the fight. And outside, look at Las Vegas. It's quiet on the strip, of course, because all the action is inside here at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Sure. Uh, and meanwhile, that's, we go back to the corner of Marco Antonio Barrara. That's the same way. That's your fight. Yeah. Nice from the outside. Don't, don't. Don't let him get, uh, give him a chance to get, get a lucky shot. Yeah. More combinations. The jab. Barrera used to disdain it early in his career. Now, Emmanuel, he's brilliant. Yeah. The jab has been really the key punch in this entire fight. And then just when these guys get frustrated with getting hit with the jab, then he'll explode with a different range of combinations. But he's working his jab beautiful and keeping good eye contact. And he has that innate sense of timing, that ability to throw the jab just at the moment when you don't yes. think it's coming. And he makes just enough of a pull to let you miss a right hand over his shoulder when you punch at him. He'll give you a half a beat or one and a half beats. He throws the jab seemingly off rhythm sometimes, and he yeah. shocks you. An exciting fight would not favor him. Juarez has landed 18 punches in the last two rounds, throwing only 84. It's not enough. He must do more. Juarez trying to move his feet now to impose a little bit more of his will on Barrera and press the action. He's still apparently able to see out of the right eye, though it continues to close progressively. Juarez a little more determined in this round. Ninth of a scheduled 12, trying to throw his left hook. But Barrera still have to be watching this guy because he's a very good little puncher still. He's a short punches with either hand, and he can do it when you least expect. So you have to watch him all the time. He's never re too relaxed. And one more thing, Emmanuel. Marco Antonio Barrera has done a much better job tonight of keeping his right hand up and guarding against that left hand. No, he's just totally focused all the way around. He, he, he's coming with a plan. He's sticking to his plan. And he's very well prepared mentally and physically for this fight. Crowd is booing because they came expecting to see the fight of the year. Instead, they're seeing a technical mastery performance by Marco Antonio Barrera, who is clearly happy to try to win this fight and be exciting the next time around. Yeah, well, he's given us so many blood and guts type battles, so he's entitled to have a good boxing match for us. 100%. Oh, bring, bring yeah. Up, bring up, bring up, back, yeah, but is Barrera Barrera? when he's fighting this kind of uh, tactical fight. Well, even some of his own fans are booing, clearly. Yeah, but... Uh, Ron is not get the easiest guy to fight, either. The kid has got good reflexes, very go difficult go, to hit go, with clean go, punches. And uh, so he's not just one of those sloppy type guys that you can do what you want with yourself, neither. We've wondered how much the cross-pollination among fighters like Barrera and De La Hoya and Hopkins and Mosley, now Winky Wright, all partners in the same firm. Would they learn from each other? Would they draft styles oh, from each other? Right I'm watching Barrera fight a Bernard Hopkins fight I'm seeing all of these guys are fighting smart fights nowadays, which they should do when they're all in their 30s now and they had a lot of wars. They all fight intelligent fights Well, now. but, you know, Oscar De La Hoya and Shane Mosley had sensational wins this year. Um, knockouts. But I think there's no question that they inspire each other, that Barrera is learning how to extend his career by watching these guys. He admits that. And I think competitively, they want to show each other what they can do. Good left hook to the body by Juarez, but again, one punch at a time. No combinations. Nothing much has happened. That's the great news for Marco Antonio Barrera. Everything's good. You understand what I'm saying? You've got to do it. All right. Can't be brown, baby. Can't be brown. Okay. Can't be brown. Can you let him draw? Step back a little bit when he's moving. Step back a little bit and come up with the left foot. You understand? Yeah. Okay. 
You've got to do it, Tom. There's Floyd Mayweather Jr. And you'll be seeing him on November 4 against Carlos Baldemir in a battle for the welterweight championship of the world. Floyd and Winky Ryder having a great time there. Funny enough, there was talk about them fighting each other last year. Which I never took serious. We're through nine and into the tenth with Juarez throwing only 42 punches in the ninth. They need more action in the Juarez corner. Harold, how do you have it to this okay, point? Jim. 88, 83, seven rounds to two. Marco Antonio Barrera. You know, Jim, even in round uh, nine, Rocky Juarez got inside, did a little bit more. But when he gets inside, all he does is try to ride Barrera across the rim. I mean, you got to open up and lay some shots. It's ridiculous. Marco just outboxing him, using that jab, using the jab to set up the right hand. Eight, seven rounds to two. Barrera. Hey, Harold. We have some viewers who still wonder what ring generalship is. Is this it? Absolutely. He's controlling the fight, keeping Juarez where he wants to keep him. That's ring generalship. Come on, bring out, bring out, bring out, bring out, bring out. It looks like a race car that is uh, moving along sedately like a sedan. Get him out, get him out, let's go. Barrera seems perfectly content to walk through a dull fight en route yeah. to a decision victory. It's, it's very strange hearing a crowd boo Marco Antonio Barrera. Never heard it before. Never have I heard it I before. I don't think they're booing him. They're booing the fight. The fight. I know it, but nevertheless, he's a part of the fight. Yeah, right. But nevertheless, it's still strange to hear him. I think he's fighting a smart fight, but they come to see a war. Now, I expected a war myself. The only person who would have ever booed a Marco Antonio Barrera fight before now was maybe Prince Nassim. He might have done some <laughs> booing the night that Barrera took him apart. Barrera was on the money that night. And he grabbed his head and, head and ran it into the corner post and said, I'm your daddy. That's right. Said, oh, my God. That, that was, was in it. the last yeah. round of the fight. Yeah. <laughs> he had a bad attitude that night. He's got a constructive attitude tonight. All right. And Rocky Juarez has not had a bad enough attitude. Juarez needed violence, not technique. Barrera is putting on a craft he's putting, on, he's putting on a good clinic tonight. Tonight he owns Juarez. One underneath every one of those punches. Totally unmarked as compared to the first fight when he was all blooded up, and eyes were swollen, mouth was bleeding. Hasn't got a scratch on oh, his face. Oh, good left hook by Barrera. <laughs> Juarez finally lands a long right across the top. Crazy. Oh, 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 no, Barrera's had enough head movement to blunt most of the impact oh, yeah. tonight. He's rolling, he's turning his head, twisting. There's a good right cross by Juarez, but it's one punch at a time. And time is running out on Rocky Juarez. Gotta go for the micro. You understand? We wait How's now. your vision in there? Okay. How many fingers? Two. Do you understand? We've got to go for it. Of course, all the beans are in behind. You start to down. Everything's down. You understand? You've got to go for it. You just can't wait for it. You've got this mud, you've got this thing, you've got that nothing. If you go from the outside, that's all the work you need to do. He's going to come all after you. He's going to challenge you now. Yeah. Keep him at... You saw the number. Marco Antonio Barrera has tripled Rocky Juarez in the landed jab category. Advice from Rocky's corner. You got to go after him. Advice... From Barrera's corner, he's coming after you. <laughs> Everybody knows what the game is now. Zombie box numbers in 10. Barrera was 18 out of 51. Juarez managed to throw 50 punches, landed only 13. Barrera's 10 of 29 jabs in the 10th round. He is still technically mastering the fight.
Emmanuel, in my limited expertise, I always say he's the smartest fighter in boxing. He's if there's yeah. anybody else who can find an adjustment and change a fight better than Barrera, I don't know who he, he is. He's amazing. You know, when you look, he fights with his head up in there. It looks like he's easy to hit, but he has that strange sense of feeling punches you know, when they pull back, when they drop underneath. It's unbelievable to have that sense of feeling and coordination after 17 years of a professional fighter and so many wars he's been in. But he's a very good technical fighter. Herrera shrugs at, Quart at Cortez as if to say, why are you talking to me? <laughs> Another of those fights so far in which one fighter is playing chess and the other fighter is playing checkers. When Marco Antonio Barrera was knocked out in the 11th round by Manny Pacquiao in San Antonio, November 15, 2003, nearly three years ago, well, that was another we all fight. wondered if he was done, if well, it was all over. I didn't put too much emphasis on that because that was one of those times when he came in unfocused, a lot of things on his mind to some degree, like he did the last fight when he fought with Juarez, but even much worse so down there. It had been revealed in the weeks before that fight against Pacquiao that he had a metal plate in the back of his skull, which had actually been there for several years, that he had fought a couple of dozen fights with a metal plate in his skull, and that became a big controversy, which Barrera had to talk about incessantly. Yes. He lost his training camp because of fires at Big Bear. He right. lost a whole week of training. He was going through a brutal divorce. He learned at the same time that his former manager had embezzled money from him. All of that was prior to the Pacquiao fight. So if ever a fighter has a right to say, I was distracted and I had a bad night, maybe it's Marco on that night. And I give him credit for that, too. He still fought. And, uh, he really did have a bad night because of that. And in addition to that, he was all week long having to be retested. And incidentally. For, for a head test related to the uh, supposed little... The big chip in the, the back of his yes. head. And incidentally, he was in the fight for a few rounds and he knocked Pacquiao down early in the fight. So yeah. it wasn't entirely a wipeout until Pacquiao really got going. And then it was. Yeah, but I, I don't think that would ever happen again. Well, that's why Barrero wants a rematch. It would never happen again. That's the one fight he wants before he retires. This is Marco's second wife, Sandra Barrera. This is not the subject of the brutal divorce I described prior to the Pacquiao fight. That was three years ago. Everybody left him then. Managers, promoters. Everybody except his trainer, right. Rudy Perez, who's been his trainer for 25 years. Interestingly, Perez, obviously a successful trainer with Barrera, was not a prize fighter himself. And I don't think he's worked with any other fighters that I know of. Not a prominent one. But whatever they're doing is working. Rocky Juarez threw only 45 punches in the 11th round. That's his punch output average for the fight. In other words, he's been much slower paced tonight than he was in Los Angeles in May when he was throwing 70 punches around down the stretch. Juarez has let himself down in this fight. Barrera has made it that way with yeah. his movement, his intelligence, his jab, his command. Yeah. There's a hard right hand by Juarez. Of course, even though Juarez and his people were at great pains to say they thought they had won the first fight, if you look back at the tape, you'll see that Rayon Taveros told Juarez in the first fight that he needed a knockout, just as he has told him that tonight. Well, it was a close fight, but I thought the boy won the first fight because he got ahead on points with the jab. But people remember what happens at the end of a fight. Correct. They, they don't, don't remember, remember the yeah. first half nearly yeah. as much. Yes, in the first half, I thought that Barrera picked up the points with the jab. And he gave him a little slight edge. There's one thing that was pointed out a few times by the smart money after what happened in Los Angeles is, hey, the first half of the fight counts the same as the second half. People just don't tend to remember. That's correct. We're in the 12th round of a scheduled 12. And Rocky Juarez did not show up the way he wanted to tonight. He's got a minute and 45 seconds to try to reverse the damage. A good example. Rocky was getting ready to try to load up on a punch in the stead. Barrera got hit, got hit first and then tied him up. There have been a few occasions in this fight when Juarez tried to step it up, but Barrera just didn't let him. 
No, and even right now, Barrera could be playing it safe, trying to run, stay away. But being the fighter that he is, he's won a fight, but he's still going to try to close the show, I bet you, and try to win this round impressively instead of just trying to Well, he to threw a left hook, taking advantage of the blind right eye of Rocky Juarez, and he, he took a chance by throwing it because he could allow himself to be countered with big shots. Look okay, at five punches with his left hand. Jab, jab, hook, jab. Oh, he's so great jab. with his left hand. Yeah. Juarez drops his arms as if to say, come on, give me a chance here. We won't let him get into the fight. No. Less than a minute to go in what has been a brilliant professional performance by one of the greatest professional fighters of the last 20 years. Ranks in the top five pound for pound, has for much of his career. Wants one more big fight against Manny Pacquiao before he leaves. Maybe he'll fight Juan Manuel Marquez. Probably not a fourth fight with Eric Morales unless it became absolutely vital because of a big Morales win over Pacquiao no, in this ball. He has stated unequivocally he wouldn't fight him again. I don't think he's ever going to give up that two to one advantage yeah. over Morales. Probably not. And he goads Suarez down the stretch. Putting on a Muhammad Ali performance. As if to I'm say, serious. where were you? Where were you tonight? Well, from you want all... to talk again about what happened in L.A.? From all appearances, Rocky Juarez blew his chance to beat Barrera four months ago. Exactly right. Because he didn't really have a chance tonight. At least in the eyes of Harold Letterman, as you see from that one-sided scorecard, Barrera winning the last eight rounds of the fight en route to 118-110. In the 12th round, Juarez threw 33 punches. That is desultory. Not enough. And Barrera toyed with him, landing 8 of 55. Probably a formality, barring some unforeseen circumstances, Chuck Jampa. Well-known veteran judge scored Barrera the winner over Morales in their second fight. Hubert Min from Hawaii, not seen him before, but he did. Well, actually, I guess we had him in Atlantic City where Carlos Baldemir was fighting Arturo Gatti, but that fight never made it to the scorecards because Baldemir was too hard, too good. And Dave Moretti, one of the five out of six Nevada judges who scored Jermaine Taylor the win over Bernard Hopkins in their two fights here in Las Vegas. He's looking for the 63rd win of his now legendary career. Four losses, one to Pacquiao, one to Eric Morales, twice to Junior Jones. Every fighter knows there's somebody out there who has your number. For Barrera, it was Junior Jones back in the day. Yeah, but he's an amazing man to see him at all of those years of fighting to finish up a fight looking like Muhammad Ali. Hey, let's go to Michael Buffer and find out the scores on this one. Ladies and gentlemen of the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, we go to the judges' scorecards. Hubert Minton scores it 117 to 111. Chuck Jampa and Dave Moretti have it 115 to 113. All three to the winner by unanimous decision and still WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, the babyface assassin, Marco Antonio Barrera. Well, Harold's score was wider than the others, and Barrera may not have thought he was cutting it as fine as 15-13 on two scorecards. But nevertheless, he emerges with the unanimous decision victory and a discouraged Rocky Juarez. Misses his chance again, although I think Larry said it well. May 20 in Los Angeles was Juarez's chance to beat Barrera. Copy box numbers, Barrera outlanding Juarez by a total of 44 punches, throwing 22 more, landing at a higher connect percentage. Jab category will be lopsided. Barrera landing 105 to only 34 for Juarez, throwing 369, 171 more jab attempts than Juarez did, and he closed Juarez's right eye, mostly with his left jab. And now let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring with Marco Antonio Barrera. Uh, all right, congratulations, Marco. What did you learn from the first fight that allowed you to win such a 
easy tactical fight this time. Well, I, I learned that never and never the fights I got to put the level to the challenger. I am I am the champion. I need to put to put my pressure to put my 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 experience. So you were very content to just outbox him in this fight rather than to exchange with him. Well, I change. I I move very fast. I use my jab all the time. Jab, 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 very fast. I, I tell him. I tell you in the last in the last mid room that I go to take two hands. I go to to send to the school. I do it. How much are you inspired, or how much do you learn from your partners in Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya, and Hopkins and Mosley? Well, I learn. I learned a lot for him because they, them put me the example. Oscar de la Hoya, the boss, oh my God, terrific fight. Uh, you remember too, uh, Bernard Hopkins, the Tarver and, and Mosley Vargas, for me was the best. Uh, look, the, see the, the, the fights and I am learning, but I don't have learning for, I don't have time for learning more because next year I say goodbye. Did they in some way show you how you could still extend your career even though you've been fighting for more than half of your life? No, no, I think so. For me, finish this sport. Next year, I want to say bye-bye because my son, my son told me, Daddy, I need more time in my home. <laughs> I tell, okay, I got to say bye-bye this sport. Who do you want to fight? Who do you see yourself fighting before you retire? I don't know. My, my boss, my boss know what, what I fight. For me, no problem. You know, I fight with whatever. I, I don't have a... Special for to fight or for the boss, Oscar de la Hoya told me, go ahead. Well, obviously, Pacquiao is somebody you want to fight, yes? For me, he's the best fight again with Manny Pacquiao. He's the best. Now he's the best. He throw many punches very fast. And you know, I am the typical, typical Mexican. I don't need with the feet, with the first fight. I need second. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. No, thank Congratulations you. again, Mark. Sorry, sorry for my English. I'm not working very hard for Lenny Mark. Thank you. you did very well. All right. Rocky, yeah. um, it seems that you had a better chance to beat him the first time than tonight. Well, you know, I want to, you know, basically thank the Lord for watching over me and keeping me safe and in good health. But, you know, Barrera didn't come to fight today, you know. He came in the box, and I think he fought a better fight than he fought the first fight, you know. I, uh, I figured he'd stay in there, but, and I even tried to convince him to come and, and, and at least trade with me, but, you know, there was never one point in the in the fight that he hurt me. You know, he caught me with a good uppercut on the eye, and and that's why I have my eye closed today. But you're the one who took most of the punches, and that's what you have to deal with with an experienced fighter. Yeah, you know, he he, he kept a good jab out there. I think he knew uh, he started me uh, pretty good. He, I every time he threw a jab, he kept retreating, just the same as the first fight. But he, uh, I wasn't able to land better shots and. And as I worked my way inside, he didn't try to trade with me. He, uh, he just uh, smothered me and waited to the referee to separate us. Thank you very much, Rocky. Jim?